This morning on Today, charges laid against terrorism suspect David Hicks after two years behind bars at Guantanamo Bay. Budget airline Jetstar under fire from dumped passengers. And in news just in, music legend Ray Charles dies aged 73. These are the stories and the people making news this Friday, the 11th of June, 2004. Today with Steve Liebman and Tracy Grimshaw. Good morning and welcome to the program. Morning, Steve. Morning, Trace. We're sorry to leave with the sad news of the passing of Ray Charles today. We don't have very many details yet. Uh, but it would appear that he has died as a result of complications from liver disease and uh, we'll bring you more details as they come to hand. And in Washington, the US Defense Department overnight has announced that three terrorism charges have been laid against Australian David Hicks. He's the third prisoner of Guantanamo Bay to be charged. We'll be talking to Hicks's Pentagon lawyer shortly. And we're talking to some very angry Jetstar passengers who say they were dumped for being late even though they arrived almost half an hour before the flight. They say there was only, they were only about five minutes late. Jetstar CEO Alan Joyce will also be here to answer those complaints. And it's time for looking back. Believe it, I cannot believe this. Believe it or not, it has been 40 years since Beatlemania swept Australia. We're going to bring back some memories for you of the Fab Four. 40 years. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? It sure is. So lots ahead, but uh, so stay with us. But first, here's Sharon Gadella with the latest news. Morning, Trace, Steve, and good morning, everyone. Well, Australian terror suspect David Hicks has been formally charged nearly two and a half years after his capture in Afghanistan. In all, 29-year-old Hicks is facing three charges, conspiracy to commit war crimes, attempted murder of coalition forces in Afghanistan, and aiding the enemy. The Pentagon has accused Hicks of attending a number of Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and joining the fight against Australian and other coalition forces in Afghanistan. It's also alleged he conducted surveillance of the US and British embassies in the capital, Kabul. Hicks is now the third detainee at Guantanamo Bay to be charged by the US. No date has been set for his trial. The Bush administration says it won't seek the death penalty in any military trials. If found guilty, the US has already agreed Hicks can serve his sentence back in Australia. The other Australian detained, Mamdu Habib, is yet to be charged. Australians in Indonesia are being warned to be on alert after revelations a J.I. assassination squad has entered the country from the Philippines. A report in the Wall Street Journal says the terrorists have the Australian, American and British ambassadors at the top of their list, but business people could also be in their sights. It's thought Jamar Lamia may be changing its tactics away from bombings, like the one in Bali, and more towards specific high-profile targets. Government sources say the threat is being taken seriously. While Labor is unlikely to change its policy on Iraq, the party's newest recruit has been rethinking some of his policy positions. Peter Garrett is falling into line with the party on such matters as retaining the US base at Pine Gap. His first day in the Labor fold didn't go completely according to plan. Garrett under pressure on his voting record. It was a rocky start for the pop star activist turned would-be politician as Peter Garrett faced a barrage of questions over his failure to be registered on the electoral roll, possibly for as long as a decade. All I can say is that if somebody hasn't voted on the last three occasions, they've had an opportunity to do so, they can't be very passionate about the future of this country, can they? Look, the PM's got it a bit wrong. I have voted. Flanked by opposition leader Mark Latham, Peter Garrett ventured into his future electorate to launch his political career. Today, I've nailed my colours to the mast. As for those voting problems, Garrett believes he did vote at the last three elections as a silent voter, someone who is registered but isn't listed on the electoral roll. I thought I had a silent enrolment. I have voted in previous elections. I have voted in referenda. I've even voted when I've been overseas. Not only is Peter Garrett being fast-tracked into a safe Labor seat, he's also being talked about already as a future Cabinet Minister. I'd be surprised that if sometime in the future 